Another one from the amazing Kurzgesagt, Banking Explained, Money and Credit. Figured that this was an appropriate one due to the current ongoing events of the world, at least here in the United States. The international banking system is an enigma. There are more than 30,000 different banks worldwide, and they hold unbelievable amounts of assets. The top 10 banks alone account for roughly 25 trillion US dollars. Ooh. Today, banking can seem very complex, but originally, the idea was to make life simpler. Dun, dun, dun. 11th century Italy was the center of European trading. Merchants from all over the continent Spice had to trade. trade their goods, but there was one problem. Too many currencies in circulation. In Pisa, merchants had to deal with seven different types of coins and had to exchange their money constantly. This exchange business, which commonly took place outdoors on benches, is where we get the word bank from, from the word banco, Italian for bench. The ah. dangers of traveling, counterfeit money, and the difficulty of getting a loan got people thinking. Mm -hmm. It was time for a new business model. Pawnbrokers started to give credit to businessmen, while Genoese merchants developed cashless payments. Networks of banks spread all over Europe, handing out credit even to the church or European kings. Banks in principle certainly make a lot of sense. It was the logical next step, for sure. There's no doubt about that. Banks aren't inherently bad. The risky, greedy people that run them sometimes are bad. But banks are not inherently bad. What about today? In a nutshell, banks are in the risk management business. This is a simplified version of the way it works. People keep their money in banks and receive a small amount of interest. Mm -hmm. The bank takes this money and lends it out at much higher interest rates. It's a calculated risk because some of the lenders will default on their credit. Yep. This process is essential for our economic system because it provides resources for people to buy things like houses or for industry to expand their businesses and grow. So banks take funds that are unused by savers and turn them into funds society can use to do stuff. Other Arguably, banks greatly increase the growth of the economy and the expandability and growth of technology as well by enabling these companies to grow and venture out. So banks, like I said, are not inherently bad. Other sources of income for banks include accepting saving deposits, the credit card business, buying and selling currencies, custodian business, and cash management services. The main problem with banks nowadays is that a lot of them have abandoned their traditional role as providers of long-term financial products in favor of short-term gains that carry much higher risks. During the Banks are supposed to be low risk. They are supposed to be low risk because... Let's quote it here. Let's quote it together. They are not supposed to fail. Banks are not supposed to fail. The financial boom, most major banks adopted financial constructs that were barely comprehensible and did their own trading in a bid to make fast money and earn their executives and traders millions in bonuses. This was nothing short of gambling and damaged whole economies and societies. Like mm -hmm. back in 2008, when banks like Lehman Brothers gave credit to basically anyone who wanted to buy a house and thereby put the bank in an extremely dangerous risk position. This led to the collapse of the housing market in the US and parts of Europe, causing stock prices to plummet, which eventually led to a global banking crisis and one of the largest financial crises in history. Yay! Human greed! It is the bane of our species human greed. One way or another, I believe that our downfall as a species will be directly or indirectly linked to our greed. Why do we have to be so greedy? Not all of us. I think a lot of us maybe have the urge to be greedy sometimes, but overcome that out of kindness, due to life experiences, or whatever it may be that causes us to overcome that need for greed, if you will. Hundreds of billions of dollars just evaporated. Millions of people lost their jobs and lots of money. Most of the world's major banks had to pay billions in fines and bankers became some of the least trusted professionals. The US government and the European Union had to put together huge bailout packages to purchase bad assets and stop the banks from going bankrupt. 
New regulations were put into force to govern the banking business. Compulsory bank emergency funds were enforced to absorb shocks in the event of another financial crisis. But other pieces of tough new legislation were successfully blocked by the banking lobby. Today, other models of providing financial... Lobbying is only legalized bribery in its current form in the United States. It's just legalized bribery. That's all it is. When companies are allowed to legally bribe the people making the policy, you don't think that maybe that our policies are influenced by the people that are being regulated. This will never change. This will never change. Never. Because the people making the rules are the ones that are being bribed. Legally. Most of the time. Legally. So why would they ever write laws about preventing that? Why would they ever do that? Why would they ever hold themselves accountable when they're exactly where they want to be? Financing are gaining ground fast, like new investment banks that charge a yearly fee and do not get commissions on sales, thus providing the motivation to act in the best interests of their clients. Or credit unions, cooperative initiatives that were established in the 19th century to circumvent credit sharks. In a nutshell, they provide the same financial services as banks, but focus on shared value rather than profit maximization. Mm -hmm. The self-proclaimed goal is to help members create opportunities like starting small businesses, expanding farms or building family homes while investing back into communities. They are controlled by their members, who also elect the board of directors democratically. Worldwide, credit union systems vary significantly, ranging from a handful of members to organizations worth several billion US dollars and hundreds of thousands of members. The focus on benefits for their members impacts the risk credit unions are willing to take, which explains why credit unions, although also hurting, survived the last financial crisis way better than traditional banks. Not to forget the explosion of crowdfunding in recent years. Aside from making awesome video games possible, platforms arose that enable people to get loans from large groups of small investors, circumventing the bank as a middleman. I actually really like the idea of crowdfunding because you are basically having a proof of concept. So instead of convincing a bank that it's a good financial decision and that you're worthy of paying off what you're borrowing, you have to convince usually the people that will actually be your customers or beneficiaries of whatever you're trying to do, that it's worth it, which is a much more direct approach. Because something that makes sense on paper as a business plan may not always make sense to the consumer. And this basically says, instead of making it make sense as a business plan model, which you still have to do in the background because you want to make sure you're making money and going down the right path, right? But instead of just relying on that, you're also having to convince people who are likely going to be your customers, you should invest money in this because it's a good product or service. And if you can't even convince those people to fund it, then it's probably a really good sign that you would have failed anyway, in my opinion. But it also works for industry. Lots of new technology companies started out on Kickstarter or Indiegogo. The funding individual gets the satisfaction of being part of a bigger thing and can invest in ideas they believe in, while spreading the risk so widely that if the project fails, the damage is limited. Mm -hmm. And last but not least, microcredits. Lots of very small loans, mostly handed out in developing countries that help people escape poverty. People who were previously unable to get access to the money they needed to start a business because they weren't deemed worth the time. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, the granting of microcredits has evolved into a multi-billion dollar business. So banking might not be up your street, but the bank's role of providing funds to people and businesses is crucial for our society and has to be done. Who will do it and how it will be done in the future is up for us to decide, though. As always, Kurzgesagt does an amazing job. I know this is one of their older videos, but I still thought it was very smooth, well explained, and the animations were pretty great. Overall, I really enjoyed it, and like I said, it's very applicable to what we got going on in the world today, so I figured now is as good a time as any. I always forget about microcredits, so I'm glad that they brought that up because the microcredit system is actually very, very good, I think. Yes, it's still a profitable business model. People are making money off of it, but it's also enabling people who wouldn't otherwise have the chance to do things that generally benefit their community. And I think that's something that we can all get behind. There's actually a lot of uh, crowdfunding websites 
or not not crowdfunding, but there's a lot of uh, group websites where you as just an individual can finance these micro loans. And sometimes they're very, very small. I mean, we're talking sub a hundred dollars and that can make someone's life. That can literally enable someone to start a business, to upgrade a business, to improve quality of life in a part of the world that otherwise wouldn't have access to it. So if that's something you're interested in, definitely look at it a little bit more and uh, help them, you know, smash out poverty in these countries. Just like you should smash the like button. And don't forget to pick up one of these while you're at it. 100% free. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it and I hope you have such a wonderful day.